Hey everybody, it's Professor Gokino. So we're going to look at Chapter 10, um, the Internet and Social Media. Certainly a topic that is dear to your heart. What I'd like you to do is to model your presentation for your term paper and project off what I'm doing here. So basically present with your webcam on and your microphone on. So you can give us a oral presentation um, with your uh, topic. So let's move in here. A short history of the internet. Um, one thing was for defense, the idea that um, the internet could be used for uh, transferring military information. Another one was a kind of global village where all computers could kind of talk to each other. So I think we have a little bit of both certainly going on here. And um, obviously without computer, you wouldn't have the internet. So you have to look a little bit at the history of the computer. In uh, the mid-1880s, Charles Babbage produced a computer that used a whole bunch of cards with punch holes in them to uh, kind of coordinate and uh, manage data. Um, Colossus was the first electronic digital computer that used binary code. Binary code means that all the information is contained within streams of just zeros and ones, or ons and offs. So imagine every letter of the alphabet having a certain on and off code, and now all of the information um, is all digitized in this kind of binary code. And then we have IBM, which was really the kind of revolution of the personal computer, being able to bring that to your home and uh, not having this, you know, monster, colossus computer that needed, you know, rooms of space and tons of cooling and everything else to do a simple calculation like, you know, 2 plus 2 is 4. Um, so the IBM personal computer. Uh, in 1962, we have ARPA and the idea of this military command um, where all these computers were kind of hooked up together and there was a redundancy of information where the transfer of information could go from one point to the other. And if that point was cut off, it could take a different route and still get there. So this idea of a kind of web of computers talking to each other and if there was some type of nuclear attack, the information would still be able to get through. So this information would be able to kind of detour from one place to another and because there were so many computers connected, it would still get through even if some of those computers went offline. Okay, an interesting story of the Apple IIe, right? So Apple was a kind of startup company, you know, garage company producing uh, computers and what they did was they gave a lot of computers away to schools, so that made them popular, obviously, right? You know, you learned on it. You like to, you know, stay on that platform. Um, the other thing was that because they gave them away to schools, at MIT in 1979, there was a program written that was a spreadsheet which combined the uh, technology of word processing with a calculator. Mitch Caper. So it was his final thesis presentation and um, it was this wonderful kind of ledger, right, called VisiCalc. And it only ran on the Apple IIe. So the idea was if you wanted to run it, you needed to buy an Apple IIe and Apple sales went through the roof. Um, they reinvested all that capital and came up with uh, great innovations like the mouse and the graphical user interface, in other words, icons on the screen. And, um, you know, the rest is history, right? The, the, the IBM, I mean, the, uh, the Macintosh, not the IBM, the Macintosh computer in 1984 was made possible by this. So we have local area networks. If you're at FIT and you're sitting in one of the labs, you're working on a LAN or a local area network. 
Um, there's also wide area networks that are wider. They can be worldwide, actually. So you might have uh, a large corporation that has a wide area network that you would have to log into to get work done or something like that. So internet service providers, you know, so we have lots of them um, where basically their idea is they provide this connection, this hosted connection to the World Wide Web. Okay, World Wide Web uses a certain kind of language or a certain kind of syntax. Uh, we all know, you know, HTTP, um, the URL that we, you know, need to get from, uh, you know, information from a certain site, and uh, FITNYC.edu, that's the idea of the syntax. Okay, browsers, search engines, all kind of searching around the internet and cataloging all of these sites so that when you go to Google and you, you know, type in uh, a search term, um, it's going to immediately find all of these different sites for you and sift through it. Frustrations with social media, lots of frustrations, right? You know, it's not perfect. It's being always fine-tuned. Um, so, but the idea is that there is um, an evolution going on here. So, um, it takes us then to the but uh, we all use it, right? Everybody's got, you know, a Facebook account or a uh, YouTube channel, and um, we're all checking in on our social media, maybe a little bit too much, right? Two, two and a half hours a day engaged with social media. And then how true is it? This idea that, you know, you have your representation of your image, your brand, your personal um, kind of look, on your Facebook page, but is it really you, or is it just a kind of idolized front that you put up there? And, uh, you know, how true is your social media? And then how true are you? You know, is it really you, or is it a, you know, fake account? Is it a Finsta, you know? Um, there's all kinds of kind of psychological issues, people who are obsessed with their online image, um, obsessed with other people's online images, and uh, you know either stalking or uh, maybe being depressed about what you look like compared to other people, Facebook envy, um, social isolation, obviously you know going into that virtual world instead of actually interacting in real life and uh, lots of kind of issues and with mental health and uh, just using up too much time online. So there is really no audience for social media. There are just users. So what happens is that we're all empowered. We're all our own broadcasters. You can, you know, produce your own media. Whereas years ago, you had to hire someone and, uh, you know, cost you a lot of money. Today, you can shoot with your iPhone. You can edit on your iPhone. You can upload with your iPhone. You can monitor your channels with your iPhone. Uh, you can reply to comments with your iPhone. And you're basically uh, a single person doing all of the stuff that, you know, the networks were doing years ago. So we have this idea of digital natives, people who were born with the internet, you know, with that phone in their hand right away. And like all of our mass media, there has been this concentration of ownership, a globalization, an audience fragmentation, a commercialism. How many times, you know, I'm, I notice YouTube, you know, more and more commercials I have to sit through when I'm trying to, you know, watch certain feeds. Uh, you're always kind of bombarded with that commercial factor. And then um, Marshall McLuhan, you know, who wrote about mass media, he was very optimistic, TV being the brightest thing in the house. Um, but, you know, the idea that maybe there's some bad things that come with it too, right? Surveillance capitalism. So the idea that someone's always watching, right? Um, why am I seeing this ad? 
it's because I search for this term and that's why you know now I'm getting delivered ads that are related to this so my privacy is uh, you know at risk here um, a lot of different uh, kind of new terms right crowdfunding slackism uh, uh, fake news and you know is it is it true or is it internet or is it you know photoshopped um, so the idea of the power of the internet and also understanding that you know all of it is not really uh, regulated and gate kept the way it might be so lots of you know uh, pitfalls and things like pornography ch child pornography um, the idea that you know your privacy has that risk um, your property your intellectual property can also be you know easily kind of copied and reused in different ways so um, pirated um, software and things like that um, is another big problem with uh, internet use uh, identity theft right you gotta worry about you know filling out kind of some kind of form and worrying you know where it's going you know is it safe to bank online so lots of things going on um, that you know need the uh, government to help us with regulations and uh, controls um, fair use you know is it fair to uh, use certain things that you find on the internet you want to be careful obviously when you're writing your term paper that you are using original material certainly use the internet for research and get an idea of uh, you know your topic and you can make sure that you cite those sources but don't do something like copy and paste from a website or hire someone to uh, write your term paper for you you know these kind of things are uh, plagiarism and uh, they're certainly not going to be good for you know your online reputation and uh, also just for your you know learning so you're really cheating yourself uh, again, we have this idea that, you know, someone is always watching. Someone could be, you know, intercepting your data, uh, surveying uh, what's going on, you know, with your data. How much privacy do you really have? And then uh, this opt-in, opt-out, right? So where you would decide whether or not you want to receive uh, by opting in and then being also able to uh, say you know what I'm done receiving I don't want that you know newsletter anymore I'm opting out okay and then lots of new technology so things like uh, you know being able to find your keys by putting a chip on them and then knowing where they are by using your phone augmented reality you know putting yourself in a virtual environment, um, Internet of Things. So, you know, I've got a beautiful new oven and I can control it with my phone. I can, you know, see the temperature, I can set the time. There's even a camera in there so I can look at the food and see how it's doing. Uh, computing in the cloud, so we don't need to really have these huge hard drives anymore. All of the stuff, you know, if you want to edit video, which are really big files, you can have them up in the cloud. Uh, facial rec recognition technology, you know, you've got that on your phone. Instead of a password, it looks at you and sees that it's you. Everybody has a unique kind of fingerprint in their face. Um, the click stream, so understanding your history and how, you know, you kind of surf the web and go from one site to the other. Cookies, um, these are things that um, internet uh, content creators will put on your computer so that the next time you go to the site it could be a good thing and you know will load faster it knows about you too it knows that you know you visited and when you visited and how many times you visited so cookies are okay but the next step might be spyware where something is really you know uh, looking at things that you don't know that it's looking at and uh, so it could be finding things like your passwords and your uh, social security number and things like that. And then we have this idea of the um, access. So, you know, there's a kind of 
digital divide where um, some of us have better internet connections, faster internet connections. Some people have no internet connection, right? So in order to use the internet, you have to go over, you know, to a library or a friend's house or something like that. So there's this kind of uh, divide between have and have nots with technology, with access, with knowledge, with high speed, you know, um, the idea of a must carry to network neutrality. So this is the idea that um, you could get um, information from any host, that everybody has to have the same things. And obviously in some countries, this is not the case. So if you lived in China, you might have restrictions on the uh, internet sites that you could uh, visit. So the media literacy things in this chapter, again, are this um, kind of a uh, compilation of things about uh, data and um, your right to it and uh, your right to privacy. So uh, certainly an interesting chapter and something that, um, like many of the chapters we looked at, but in, in I think more so with this one, um, is it's really developing and changing and growing every day. So you really have to kind of stay on top of it. And it's very exciting actually to um, be a part of it and you know be uh, alive today where you know you're really being able to witness all these great innovations and changes and uh, technology. So things that you know used to have to pay for um, now you get free. So you know I remember when I first got Microsoft Office it was so expensive and like oh my god today you know you can use Google Docs and uh, you know use it online for free. So I um, hope you enjoyed the chapter and uh, you know the readings in there, and hopefully you uh, you know are doing well with your term project and term paper. Um, so if you need any help setting up your computer so that you can record this kind of webcam uh, feed in there, let me know and I can help you out with that. So, you know, it is required that you do a presentation uh, which kind of is a synopsis summary of your uh, paper and uh, I would like you to do it with your camera in the on position. So, have a great day and uh, enjoy.